In this video, we're going to talk about the product and the quotient rule and how to apply them. Now, before that, though, I just want to make a brief comment on notation. If you were to see something like f prime of x versus f prime of 3, what's the difference? Well, first of all, f prime of x is an equation, and f prime of 3 is a number. Specifically, this is just the derivative with x left as x, so you could then take that equation, plug in x, and find the slope at that specific point. Versus this is saying, uh, find this guy first, and then plug in x as 3, and whatever slope you get is what this guy equals. It's specifically the slope when x is 3. So, for example, if this is your function, uh, if I were to ask what's f prime of x, you would say, all right, well, the derivative of x squared is, well, the 2 comes down, so 2x, uh, plus the derivative of 10 is 0. So really, the derivative here is just 2x. But if I were to ask what's f prime of 3, well, first, I actually have to find this first. A uh, common misconception is people will try to plug in 3 here first and then take the derivative. But if you did that, you'd always get 0 because if you plugged in 3 here, that's already a number, and the derivative of a number is always 0. You've got to find this derivative first, and once you have that, you can now plug in what is f prime of 3 and say that f prime of 3 in particular is going to be 6. So that's how you can get the slope when x is 3 is particular 6. Now, one thing though, in this function, this function was basically x squared plus something else, and the way I found the derivative was I took the derivative of this guy plus the derivative of that guy, and that was fine. But what if you had two functions multiplied to each other? In general, if two functions are multiplied to each other, you can no longer, you can't just say that, oh, it's the derivative of this guy times the derivative of that guy. Uh, for example, if you were to just have uh, y equals x times x, well, you can't just say, well, the derivative of x is 1 times the derivative of x is 1, and so the overall derivative is just 1. I mean, we know that's wrong because this x times x is literally x squared. So we already know that the derivative of this guy has to be 2x. It can't be 1. huh? So what do we do then? If you have something where it's the product of two different functions, sometimes you might be able to just multiply them out and simplify it and then take the derivative. But in some other cases, you might not be able to do that, right? So in general, here's the product rule. Anytime you have some function that's really two functions multiplied to each other, the derivative is going to be, well, the derivative of the first guy, all right, f prime of x, and then times, take a little breather, just copy down the second guy as is, and then plus, now the other way around. Now the first guy as is, and then take the derivative of the second guy. So applying that here to this first problem, the derivative of, the first guy, so here, this is like f and this is g. So the derivative is going to be, well, the derivative of the first guy is just 1, and then just copy down the second guy as is, don't even think, and then plus, and now the first guy as is, you're still not thinking, you're just copying down, right? So again, you're basically taking the derivative of 1 times the original of the other guy, and uh, the order doesn't really matter which one you do first, but it will for quotient rule in a sec. So a good rule of thumb is just, Take the derivative of the first guy first. So the derivative of the first guy, and then times the second as is, plus, now the other way around. Now the first guy as is, and the derivative of the second guy, the derivative of this x happens to be 1. So this was fairly simple in that the derivative was, uh, you know, 1, and the original was x. Same thing for the other, other guy. And when you simplify that, this is just x times 1 is x, plus x. x plus x, that's 2x. So the derivative of this guy is 2x, which we knew because this is x squared. So that sort of verifies, in this case, that the product rule works, that by applying the product rule, we got the same derivative that we would have gotten if we just simplified this into the derivative. But what about this? Here, we can't really check our answer per se, but we can apply the product rule and see what we get. So the derivative here, again, derivative of this first guy, let's just focus on that. The derivative of phi to the x is ln of 5 times phi to the x. All right, now we can take a breather. Just copy the second guy as is. So this is time going to be times x to the fifth plus 
Still taking a breather, just copying down this first guy as is. Phi to the x. So again, you take the derivative, then you just do a bunch of copying down. Copy down this guy as is, plus copy down this guy as is. And now, finally, take the derivative of the second guy, which would be 5x to the fourth power. And overall, this is going to be your derivative. This guy right here is the derivative of this guy. All right. Now, what about the quotient rule? Similarly, if you were to have a function that's really some function divided by some other function, in that case, what do you do? Well, in that case, the rule is this. The derivative, h prime of x, is going to be, well, it's kind of similar to this guy, except there's a minus. So basically take the derivative of the first guy at the top, so f prime, right, times the bottom of the second guy as is, and now minus, and that's why the order really matters, you do got to take the derivative of the first guy first, minus, not the other way around. Now just copy down the, the top guy and then take the derivative of the second guy, right? So it's sort of like that just with a minus, and one additional thing, you also divide by the denominator, the original denominator, squared. So by the, whatever g of x was, squared. So notice if you just look at the formula, the quotient rule looks a lot more complicated than the product rule because it's like a fraction. But really, other than the fact that it's a g squared on the bottom, it's really the same thing with a minus versus a plus in the middle. That's just, that's just one little uh, strategy to keep in mind to make it easier. But anyway, let's now apply this. So let's look at this guy, f of x equals 85 over x squared. Let's first apply the quotient rule and see what we get. Well, let's see. The derivative here, uh, first the derivative of the first guy first, so that's going to be, well, the derivative of 85 is 0 times the bottom guy as is, x squared, minus, and now we're going to write uh, 85 as is, and do the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, all over the derivative of x squared, the original guy, not the derivative, just the original guy, squared. So x squared squared is really just x to the fourth. And this we can see that simplifies to, you know, push this down a bit. And this, let's see what this simplifies to. This top, 0 times anything is 0. So this is just negative, and then 85 times 2. That's going to be 170 x over, and this is x to the fourth, which we could simplify as negative 170 over x cubed. Now I simplified this here just because to show to illustrate one point here. Here, we didn't actually need the quotient rule. In general, it's a good idea to not do the quotient rule if you don't need it. So another way to have done this problem is to really just rewrite it. Uh, in general, you only need the quotient rule when you have a variable on the top and the bottom. Here, I could have just rewritten this original guy. I could have rewritten it as 85 x to the negative 2, and then it's a little bit easier to take the derivative. The derivative, the negative 2 comes out front, so negative 2 times 85, and then x to the power of negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3, and we literally just in one step get that answer because it's negative 2 times 85, that's the same thing as this, over x cubed because x to the negative 3 is like an x cubed on the bottom, right? So in this case, again, uh, when you don't have to, you know, it's, it's going to be easier to not do it. But in problems like this, you have no way around it. You need the quotient rule because you have a variable on the top and the bottom in a way that doesn't simplify cancel one of them out, right? So you have to use the quotient rule here, so it's, it's, it's important to know it. Here, and again, p versus, uh, q versus x doesn't make a difference. Uh, the process is still the same. So here, in this function, um, instead of f, they're calling it p, and instead of x, they're calling it q, but again, the process is still the same. So here, the derivative, the p prime of q, again, that's just the notation for the derivative of this guy. Uh, again, we're going to do the same thing. So first, we're going to take the derivative of this guy, of root q, where again, that's no different than the derivative of root x. Well, what I would do personally, that simplify this and say, well, that's really q to the one half, right? Over ln of q. So that's a little bit more derivative friendly. So q to the one half, 
the derivative of that's going to be one half q to the negative one half. And if you're not familiar with that, you can watch the previous video on the power rule. All right, so that's the derivative of this guy times the second guy as is. So without even thinking, just ln of q and then minus and then the other way around. Now just write q to the one half as is. And then now the derivative of the bottom, the derivative of ln of q is one over q. Right? All that over the original denominator, which is ln of q, that whole thing uh, squared. So basically that gives us the answer. Now you could simplify that if you want. There's some things that can cancel like these and then you can combine like terms and stuff. Uh, but for our purpose, but that's just algebra over here, right? For our purposes, the quotient rule, this is it. This, uh, we know, as long as we didn't make any, any mistake with taking the derivative and setting it up like this, that would equal the derivative.